The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Force Center podcast feed, and this particular episode of the Force Center podcast feed is the Bad Batch Report. Uh, that is wonderful. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and the person making the wonderful sound effects of the beautiful mouth music, that is Ken Napsock. Me and beautiful mouth music go hand in hand. Happy to be here. <laughs> what a great image, hand in hand with mouths. Uh, that I really liked the uh, the little bit of intro music you did there. It definitely had a little bit of a Western standoff mm. uh, vibe, but it also sounded a little bit uh, like the music from that old, old BBC version of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, you're speaking my language. Everyone knows Hitchhiker is one of my favorite things. And uh, yes, I uh, I enjoy that. That's good. That's a good pull. Good pull, sir. Yeah, yeah. But in relation to uh, Bad Batch, definitely a great Western showdown there. So that's what we're going to get into. This episode has a lot, including a terrifying, very Western showdown. Uh, we are discussing episode eight of The Bad Batch. It is called Reunion. It is written by Christian Taylor, directed by Stuart Lee. And I should start sharing this credit uh, almost every episode. There's a, a story editor credit, a story editor, Matt Machenovitz. And this episode was about 26 minutes, Ken. And according to some of the people who worked on the show and are tweeting it out, we are at the halfway point of the show. Right. So it looks like a, that 16 episodes quote that's been floating around is indeed accurate. How are you feeling about that? I, uh, I, as expected, right? So it's like, uh, we're, we're hunkered down in this bad batch bunker and uh, I'm enjoying the ride. And I'm, I, I like that. I like that. I don't feel rushed and I don't mind the modern TV season length, right? I know you and I and others grew up on the 23 episode broadcast television runs. Um, it's a game of Thrones. Obviously I love 10 episodes. I got or seven and six towards the end. People did feel rushed. Obviously. I, I love this. I love that. Here we are a midpoint of a big story. Uh, that's a that's an important thing for screenwriting, right? And so this episode had that feel. It really did work. Absolutely. I think it is significant that this is longer uh, episodes and just a longer amount of our time as humans mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. of it than we are used to for a lot of things. Uh, certainly, like, broadcast television is still a lot of times those seasons are longer. But, yeah, we're, we're used to 10, maybe 12. Yeah. Uh, but 16 is – I did have that that emotional reaction of, like, Wow, we're right in the middle of this story. Uh, a big, eventful, uh, horrible thing happened, right? It's yeah. totally uh, to be expected yeah. for the middle of a story. But then to think like, and and I'm still going to be in this story in like August. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, you know, my uh, my fiance, my partner, Grace, uh, she loves on Netflix so these um, foreign uh, dramas from all around the world, murder dramas. It's a lot of shooting, sex would make superheroes blush. I just hear it as I walk through the living room. And then she'll come and she'll be like, I'm so upset. I'm like, why? She's like, it's only six episodes and it ended. And I'm like, oh, well, Bad Batch, it's going 16, huh? <laughs> come join Bad Batch. And you'll hear different things. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, going to leave that alone and move on to our overall reactions. Ken, did you love this episode? Like it? Struggle with it? What'd you think? Hot damn. Can I do that on Force Center? We don't do that much. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hot damn, indeed. I, I, coming off episode seven, which was my favorite so far, this is already being talked about as one of the best of the season and one of the best Star Wars episodes in a while, at least some of the chats I'm seeing, particularly in our Discord uh, here on Force Center. I mean, what, do you, what 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 can't you talk about, Joe? I mean, great tension, comedy, uh, character comedy, things I've really never seen before in Star Wars. That's just a great template for a good Star Wars story, no matter what the medium is. And I, I do believe this episode is going to be talked about for a while. This is me one of those uh, sitting around a bar, at Star Wars Celebration thirty one, uh, and going, "Hey, remember the oh, man, episode eight? The Mort Mortis are Clone Wars. Uh, the Fives are. Oh, that episode eight and uh, reunion. Oh, bad batch. Loved it." Yeah, no, I, I think uh, instant classic. Yeah, I'll go that far. I really did love this episode. I think it really um, works great. It is its own self-contained episode, but it works so well uh, paying off a lot of the uh, ideas and emotions and plot that they've built up. Yeah. And I think sometimes when an episode kind of pops like this, it's because exactly as you're saying, it, it is uh, it, it's that great Star Wars tradition of new and old where there's many kind of familiar uh, ideas but then kind of some new things that we haven't seen as much. And this episode felt like, to me, 
just an extremely deadly bottle episode. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's that phrase of the bottle episode for, you know, when characters are in a confined space. Uh, sometimes it, it uh, originally was created, you know, for budget reasons of like, we can't yeah. leave the set. So uh, they're going to be stuck in this room. Um, this was very much an emotional bottle episode of they kind of can't get out of this this space, uh, right. this bit of uh, history. Um, so I think that gave it this great, energy of uh it w wasn't quite haunted house wasn't that level of or that kind of horror but it gave it that sort of feel um mm. and then you know obviously there's a lot of uh, great returning faces and i was just really tickled that like this is the return of all of our favorite characters who chew on toothpicks <laughs> a lot of toothpick chewing there's a lot of crosshair and Cad Bane. Uh, Bad Batch is just going to wake up at night just in terror of anyone chewing on a space toothpick because it means just horror for them. And I, I, I'm thinking of that uh, Star Wars Darth Vader toothpick dispenser that uh, Steve Sansweet has up there in his collection that just <laughs> Vader reaches over and hands you a toothpick. I wonder, wonder if they have that in their uh, collections, <laughs> crosshair and Cad Bane. I think they're going to soon. they got to get all that uh, Vader propaganda out there to terrify the galaxy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you you touched on this as well. I just think that there was uh, such a, a great mix of action. There was some of like my favorite action moments uh, so far in this show. Uh, there was a lot of comedy for a dark episode where uh, there are high stakes. Uh, Wrecker was like back. It was, <laughs> uh, it almost felt like a mission of like, well, now that we've gone through this little uh, arc of uh, Wrecker's trauma. Look, he's back. He's making jokes. He loves bombs. Uh, he can hit his head again, and it's just fun. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't yep. break him. Uh, so there's a lot of action, a lot of comedy, and then just that uh, great depth of character, uh, clarity in, in plot and motivations. I think things that were kind of, oh, yeah, that's probably what it is, and that probably makes sense. We're just kind of laid out much more clearly in this episode, I thought, of yeah. it's the... Kaminoans or Kaminoans who are sending out the bounty hunters to try to um, get Omega back alive. And of course, uh, the Empire sending out uh, the deadly crosshair with his few proto stormtroopers and clones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, any other overall thoughts before we dive into the big ideas? I would love to get to the big ideas, but the final thing I, I just wrote now, we're going places, uh, which is, uh, you, you and I remember we've talked about midpoints before and just a basic screenwriting term and an approach and just this, this episode had definitely has that feel uh, with 16 episode arc and just, uh, you know, I, I really feel the, the, the page turn and we're, we're going places now in this story and I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It is really uh, pointing at uh, at the runway, and it is flying off. And I really like that. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Is it going to be uh, for the rest of the season or most of the season? Omega is separated, or is it going to be they're going to get her back next episode? I don't know, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get into the big themes and ideas. What did you feel was really at stake in this episode? I love this uh, idea. I, I think it was the band Fastball that had the song uh, The Way. Anyone can see the road that they walk on is paved in gold. I put down the path and the way. A lot of talks about path, journeys, and even the, a, a literal looking for the path out of the cruiser. So there's that thing, which to me also rolls, rolls in this theme of teamwork and connection. Literally a shot of everybody grabbing a bomb and working together. And bad things happen when they're separated and not working together. So there you go. Uh, uh, Kenny Clone Wars coaching point is also in this one as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I think for me, I, I'm really on the same page with you about this idea of paths. In particular, what really jumped out to me is this idea of escaping your past uh, yeah. or, you know, going on a different path that really gets uh, framed by this little ongoing debate between Hunter and Echo, right? Of We know from previous episodes that Hunter wants to make a change. You know, the second episode, he he sought out Cut LeQuain to say, we kind of got to keep our heads down. How do you do that? And Cut suggested, well, you have to be something different. You have to evolve. And then Hunter's kind of acting that out by going, well, what we need right now is to just be something different. We need to basically rob our own past, <laughs> take yeah. this armory off this ship that we're all very familiar with, uh, or ships of this type, mm. pay off Sid and, and be something different that Hunter himself doesn't seem quite willing to put a name to. Yeah. And Echo is pushing back and saying, we're soldiers, not arms smugglers. And that comes up a couple of times, this mm. idea of 
kind of echo wanting to have gone with Rex because that's a little bit more continuing in a slightly different way on on their true identity, on their true path, mm-hmm. and Hunter wanting to find something new. So they've already got that that tension between them mm-hmm. about going forward. Uh, can you can you change kind of what you are, who you are, and then so much of of this great action-packed episode is just i feel like the ideas are just physically in the space and what's happening Mm. to them right that they literally can't escape a jedi cruiser that is a a symbol of their past Uh, they're trying to make it out and sometimes weighed down by these weapons of their past right uh the fact that they can't get out as efficiently as they normally could is uh in a large part because crosshair knows their moves right this is like uh, their own past their own tactics coming back to haunt them you know all wonderful stuff here yeah down to the little moments some of some of my favorite moments uh, when we start breaking down those moments a little bit later on second half of the show but omega looking out over the wreckage and you really the great funny moment a character comedy moment follows but right what you're saying literally their past is there we're in the ruins of the past wrecker uh, proton torpedo. I love tor- proton torpedoes. I mean, just everything <laughs> around it. But it, leading into this crosshair thing, uh, you know, you could honor uh, or, or say, I should say, uh, he's on he's on his um, the wrong path, and 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 issues into you know how much control he has over that. We we know still to come. But I love what you're saying about the the past really just being this wrecked iron prison. Yeah, that they just can't get out of. And, and I really even like the the through line with the thermal bombs. You know, there's that yeah. great contrast right at the beginning where the episode starts uh, with a sense of doom and foreboding, right? That's uh, mm-hmm. if you watch with the subtitles before you even see anything, it's the, you know, thunder rumbling and lightning cracking on Camino. Yeah. And then there's this real contrast when we go to, to Braca, which is not, you know, exactly a vacation spot, but the way Braca is portrayed right at the beginning when Wrecker is, uh, is, teaching uh omega with these bombs the there's a beam of sunlight on them uh the subtitles say birds singing you know there's a real contrast of what they could be versus kind of where they came from it's a um, sunday morning on Braca. it's a sunday morning on Braca, and uncle wrecker is teaching the youngins about bombs <laughs> yeah uh, but but part of what i really liked about that is the bombs become the symbol of the uh, of of passing on what you know of of the next generation of you know bonding after wrecker and omega bonding after what they went through last episode and then in hunter's eyes those bombs are our currency to sell the sid he's trying to kind of turn them into something different uh, but they end up being trapped and using them exactly as they've always used those bombs <laughs> you know as explosive actual explosive devices as objects yeah. of war to uh, escape this newest problem yeah, and that, that ties into something that's really interesting to me, and maybe it moves into the bigger perspectives of Star Wars, but, you know, we, we st- the, the conversation between Hunter and Echo that, you're right, is ongoing, just Rex is on his own path. We, we, we literally hear that, and, I, I, and you touched upon it, but I love that Hunter's maybe not ready for that path. We feel he might be, but he, he has a path. O- Omega, is, as he said several times, seems to be where his uh, path has taken him in terms of protecting or saving her, but Echo, wanting to follow Rex, but I always also interpret it as just kind of being stuck on being a soldier. So the questions of how do you go forward? Uh, when is it right to go forward? And now you got bombs literally going, we can't go forward with them. <laughs> we have to <laughs> use them as we always did. Uh, that stuff was all through this episode for me. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's what's also really interesting about this episode is it, it didn't feel like uh, it was putting any sort of thumb on the scale of is Echo right, is Hunter right? It's really a picture of their wrestling with how to move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 there's been a lot of times in this season where you know I don't know I get really excited for uh, themes, Joseph, that um, are are about uh, tough choices that you have to make and no right answers. I just, <laughs> I'm always like, yes, and it's no, it's it's not clear which way is the best yet. I love that stuff. Yeah, it's not clear yet, or there's maybe multiple paths forward, yes. and you have to yes. uh, choose the one that is right for you. Or yeah, I, I, I like that it is. Uh, there's some beautiful, beautiful ambiguity. Mm-hmm. Um, Last thing for me on this sort of escaping your past uh, idea, I even felt, uh, here, here we go with some Cad Bane talk. Don't worry, there'll be a plenty. Uh, there's a, even a little bit of that with his line to a hunter of, I've taken down so many clones over the years. Once you figure out one, the rest are easy. And, you know, it's a great hunter line of like, you know, no, we're we're not regs. We're the bad batch, you know. Yeah. Uh, so he hunter pushes back of like, no, we're, we're unique and you're going to figure that out. Uh, but still things don't go great for hunter. 
um, no. <laughs> in that particular instance. Uh, but Cad Bane's line really does have that, like, you can't escape what you are. Mm-hmm. You can't, yeah, and and there's uh, some other path uh, type of themes going for me. The Lamassu and, and Alice represent like uh, the K- K- Kamenians, uh, uh trying to stay on their own path. I mean, we start the first line you really hear is as uh, Rampart being upset that you know you know you got to tell me anything around here, and they they, uh, they got a contingency plan. Uh, I love, but this title reunion, right? This uh, you know uh, reunited and it doesn't feel so good kind of theme. Literally, it's to be the old paths and new paths together. And I love that Crosshair is really holding their quote new path or their new uh, history they're building over them. He's belittling them about looking what they've look what you've become type of thing. Yeah, uh, and, and we know he's again un- under under certain amount of control from that chip. I, I get that, but I, I just love that part of it too. Of you know, even Crosshair is like, you you can't escape your past. I know who you are. Look at you silly little boys trying to move forward. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really great because there is like a wrestling with, if they're not soldiers, what is their noun? You know, Ooh. because Echo pushes back and says, you know, we're not armed smugglers. And then uh, Crosshair calls them scavengers, which uh, apparently in Star Wars, I think, is just a horrific insult we obviously know it is a thing that plenty of people do but the way scavenger is always said it mm. feels like it should be bleeped out the way star wars characters it's say sure, it to one another or, yeah or or scavenger scum is the punk band we need to start now because it, <laughs> it's, it's great yeah uh any other thoughts on uh on paths that's a, a great way to process it all uh, yeah but just uh yeah, just summarizing it for me, just putting putting it all into a cruise. You're right to invoke the uh, bottle episode uh, kind of trope there on a major level, and and again for me, really connected with this like when when they they get out or start to get out when they're all working together, and then when they're separated, bad things are happening. So a great powerful kind of uh, connection theme as well in Star Wars, but just all these various paths out of your past, all in a wrecked. I said iron earlier. I said Durastil be more correct uh prison i love this <laughs> yeah no you're right that that is a great uh theme that they start to that the bad batch even with all of their uh funny bickering and uh some absolutely killer funny bickering in this episode mm-hmm. that they are at their best when they work together and use all their skills to complement one another and when they uh, come apart uh mm-hmm. when they are not in a <laughs> point of reunion things go even worse for them it's yeah. great uh, perspective um, another big theme for me that I wanted to touch on is I felt like just the idea of war was kind of under the microscope, particularly uh, the romance of war or the fun of adventure versus kind of the horror and the reality. And that's this yeah. great tension that's always present in Star Wars, right? Because it's called Star Wars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a part of the thrill of it is an adventure serial. And a part of the thrill of it is we get to see people uh, fight with uh, laser swords and blow things up. But then also Star Wars often uh i think it is arguing for uh pacifism and the idea of we're all connected and let's avoid violence if at all possible so that's one of the tensions that makes star wars interesting to me and i think it was really present in this episode that we're starting with a, a literal image and idea of uh let's avoid explosions from wrecker of all people of right. <laughs> record training omega to uh, defuse bombs and then you mentioned this moment uh, already, but it's really highlighted when Omega looks out at just these uh, horrible scraps, these, you know, mm-hmm. all these uh, machines of war that have fallen apart are going to be recycled into other machines of war, uh, most likely. And there's almost a sense, I thought, of like romance, right? Because she just, yeah. she hasn't seen much at all. And she's looking out at just this devastation. Mm-hmm. It's like, what was the war like? And you almost, it, it's right on the edge for me of like, what is she thinking? Is she trying to figure out like, is it fun or is it scary or is it somewhere in between? It feels like she's trying to process that and gets that very funny response uh, from tech, but kind of she frames that question of what, what is war really like? Mm. And she doesn't really get an answer from tech, but then I think she's really getting one through her experiences here, right? Uh, yeah. We see moments of romance and fun. You know, she gets to uh, use her crossbow and take down some, some dudes, you know, and she, has that fun line about I've never been inside an ion engine before. So there's those moments of like coming of age, adventure, fun. Um, but then this episode is constructed, shot, written in a way to emphasize horror, right? When uh, they're trying to get through for to cross here and he's like, aim for the kid. And, you know, they they doubt like is Crosshair really gonna incinerate us? He's that far gone and like, well, we have no choice, so we gotta fight back. And 
they really make sure that we understand that Crosshair's injuries are ghastly. Mm-hmm. And then after Hunter gets shot by Cad Bane and, and uh, is regaining consciousness, that great helmet shot, that great perspective oh, yeah. from Hunter where there's no glory, there's no fun. That's horror, right? Of I'm I'm barely awake, I'm barely okay. Am I going to make it? Is everybody else going to make it? So there's this real mix of of offering to question, what is a war like in moments of kind of coming of age adventure serial fun in moments of absolute grisly horror? Yeah, you you were touching on what I really loved about this Omega moment and you're making it uh, mean even more for me. So thank you, number one, too. Uh, it, it stood <laughs> out to me for a lot of reasons. We've got the wide-eyed wonder of Omega that's running all the way through it. I love that you also brought in the ion, uh, the ion in, engine chamber moment too so th- that's part of what's going on with her she's she's a sponge soaking up all these experiences and it's charming and our uh, word of the of the season endearing with omega but the i i i wondered too because we as a viewer are almost looking out and seeing those things alive again i, I love being on a like the, the bridge of the start of story and just I, I, I even flash back to like you Lara and all those things we as fans know the clone wars so i had that romance to it and there yeah. is some of that, right? There is some. It, I'm thinking of Rex in season seven and the tough questions of, uh, uh, you know, without us, without the war, us clones don't exist. And so it's this weird thing that's wrapped in all those kind of heavy things, the romance things. And I thought it was a perfect use of tech to have him just be like, uh, war is a series of missions and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's it. Not that there that is truly it, but just that it kind of, it was it was a dare I say a slap in the face of of, of the dreaming of the <laughs> death and destruction of war. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think it, it's a, a great moment just because it is honestly his perspective, right? It's it's a yeah. funny joke, but it it's one of those things where it, it, we can laugh at it because we understand it from the outside. But you know, he is kind of telling Omega like I don't process it emotionally, uh, and yeah. then of course Omega is going to most likely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I yeah, there's a lot to that moment. It was uh, we always talk about comedy of character, but that, that just what that means is there's there's purpose with the humor. You're communicating with the humor as a, as a writer. You're telling the moment, you're telling the thing, and and then so that that works for you. That hit me in that level. It, it, it just because I again looking out the window with Omega was was probably seeing things that she was thinking she was seeing. You know about what it was. Yeah. Glory. What? Oh. Yeah. What? It, what was it when these these giant ships actually were yeah. blasting through the sky? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying she is just thinking, "Oh, war sounds great." I'm not. I'm not saying that, but just and and there's and 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 there's positive things to take out of what everyone's learned from each other and the adventures and the connection, and all these things that we also love in Star Wars. So I think that's there too, but it just was. It was a specifically poignant moment. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's maybe the power of this for me because it, it speaks to that tension I love in Star Wars of the the action and the thrill is, of course, just fun for us as an audience. It's natural and good mm-hmm. that we want to watch conflict to process ideas of conflict and just I- enjoy it uh, as viewers. And then for characters, it's often just this metaphor of uh, this crucible of mm. of adventure and challenge that we have to go through to become our best selves. And I think that's why the coming of age story keeps being so popular and important in Star Wars. And you get these great moments in here where you get to see Omega processing both like the the necessity of facing your challenges and finding a way through and finding joy within uh dark times and then uh, Omega having to uh unlike Tech really emotionally face horror including right. her own abduction by the end. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a real horrific half beat later on we can talk about with her and Cad Bane that I just, it really uh, hit me in a, in, a, in a way I wasn't expecting. So great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So any other uh, thoughts on this episode in particular? Or do you want to move on to how some of the ideas in this episode reflect a larger storytelling and perspective of Star Wars? Yeah, let's look at that larger van mural of Star Wars. <laughs> let's pull the van up and study the mural. Uh, what do you got? Mm. Took a big swig of electrolytes, folks. Uh, here we go. Um, so there's this, um, you, you mentioned the Hunter line. I wrote it down. In our present situation, we need money. I added the all caps on need. And we have a chance to make a lot of it right here. Uh, and this is in response to stuff going on with him and Echo and this ongoing conversation, stuff that, you know, the choice that Rex left them with, which we, you and I both highlighted of, you know, good for Rex. You're, you're either going to get there or not, or your path is your path. I, I can't force you to join the burgeoning rebellion. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Very smart of Rex. 
uh, part of, I think, the lesson he learned with Cut Quain back in the Clone Wars uh, show. So I, I wrote down this idea of like, how are you choosing your path is, is important to me. We always talk about how you fight wars, but are you letting circumstances dictate it? And that's a lot of what is in Hunter's voice to me. I think he knows. He knows maybe he has to move forward. He knows there's something else. He's definitely on board the Omega thing. I think that's a correct decision and an, an important decision to change him and, and change all of them. Um, are you moving forward on your own? Are you truly finding your path? This all made me think of the prequel era Jedi where mm. circumstances really dictated where they went. Um, and some of those circumstances are things that you probably had to get involved in. And or maybe once you start, you have to keep going. All those kind of big questions that it just made me think of those kind of big themes about how how you choose that path is almost just as important, if, if not more important than the path. Yeah, no, I really like what you're saying. My mind went to a, a similar place. I kind of wrote it down as uh, you must choose <laughs> the uh, classic Star yeah. Wars theme of uh there's a lot about choice and there is exactly what you're saying uh with hunter like he's he's looking for in in this uh episode kind of the word for it he knows omega is the priority in protecting her but what does that mean then for the rest of the group ultimately mm -hmm. what are they going to settle into uh being um which is all valid it's all the path stuff but then with the rex and echo part of it it becomes uh very specific to i think this time period about eventually you're going to have to choose a side. Either you're going to uh, stand against the empire or kind of by ignoring the empire and just letting it go about its business, you're, you're choosing a side as well. Um, so Echo really makes this very specific argument that they should have gone with Rex, which implies to fight the empire. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, Echo says, if we left with Rex, we wouldn't have to owe Sid at all. Really highlighting it is it's a different life path, a different choice. Hunter says he's on a different path than us. Uh, and Echo says, Hunter, we're soldiers. What other path is there? So that's really about, like, who are we going to be? But it's also, it, it was meaningful to me because it is Echo very much saying, the this empire is bad. Rex is fighting it. We should continue to be soldiers. We should go and fight the empire. And Hunter's like, no, no, no. We, we, we got to do this other thing that I only have partially defined. Uh, yeah. And in all that, what happens in the episode? The empire comes for them anyway. Yes. So is it a choice or isn't it? The Empire is after them. I know at what point are they going to stop running and turn around and just fight the Empire? Yeah. Again, how are you choosing your path? Path? Are you going to let the path find you? And that doesn't always work out. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're 100 percent right. That Echo stuff, you know, because, again, I, I posed the question up top, uh, you know, hey, is Echo just stuck in who he is? Yeah, we're a soldier that's always got. Now we know uh, the implications are fight the Empire, bigger things, important things that they're now doing, like you said, um, but uh, it just begs, begs that question of, of just like, don't let anyone else choose for you. Make that choice. It's going to be more powerful. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and in some ways it's it's different, but it, it evokes Han Solo stuff for me, right? Of I can yeah. just get by. I don't have to. The Empire's bad, but I just uh, avoid them, stay out of their way. I don't like them, but I'm not going to turn around and fight them. That's not my thing. And it feels like Hunter is kind of wrestling with that. And, and yeah. Echo's got his like, I'm ready to put on my jacket with the rebel insignia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and be a rebel. You know, they're, they're not yeah. using those words yet, but that it feels like Echo's already being like, come on. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's fight the Empire. Yeah, with the Han thing is if you're not careful, suddenly you find yourself in the Death Star. Yep, yep. You're fighting the Empire one way or another, so just choose. Uh, any other big themes for you? Uh, th that's the one that resonated most for uh, me. Uh, obviously, we keep uh, coming back to these choices and all those kind of things, but just just that one really, hey, because you're, you're, you're exactly right. You're taking it into a lot of different areas uh, for the, you, the individual, Rebels versus Empire, all these kind of things that are at play in Star Wars, and, and it was uh, why, why this episode really resonated for me. Yeah. I think the other big thing for me that was uh, really effective is this very, uh, very old, very traditional, very good Star Wars theme of uh, fighting your own family, uh, family of origin versus family of choice. You know, a lot of this episode is the horror of Bad Batch fighting their sibling crosshair. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's why it's called Reunion. It is this uh, if they wanted a more pulpy title, it would have been like Dark Reunion or Reunion of Doom. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, it's not a good reunion. Uh, and, you know, they're so intent on protecting Omega and having this devotion to Omega, which I think is, is right and good and the point of the story and and moral and wonderful. But there's this also this tension of they understand the inhibitor chips much better now. Right. 
yeah. they they get what's happening to Crosshair uh, more than they did before. And they had even expressed a desire to help Crosshair when they, even earlier in the season, when they realized this is probably not his choice. And now they know much better from their own personal experience. Really, really probably not his choice. But there's no real, like, they bring up to him mm -hmm. that uh, this isn't your choice, right? Yeah. Uh, but there isn't a real, like, Crosshair, please, let's work together. They just want to protect Omega and escape Crosshair. And it's a real family tension. <laughs> so Yeah, especially, yeah, Crosshair going to aim for the kid is, uh, yeah, it's not going well. <laughs> not going well, not going well. And then the last thing for me of the kind of just the, the classic uh, family versus family, sibling versus sibling uh, cycle of violence, uh, Crosshair's injuries being really horrific in causing what looks like could be permanent damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, but definitely that old Star Wars language of the the scars of war uh, uh, that appear physically on your body are a manifestation of the you know the scars of your your choices. Um, that there's a real energy to me of almost like a, a Vader and Obi Wan of you know like the the wounds that uh, Obi Wan inflicts on Mustafar to Vader are horrific. But you know, did Anakin leave him any choice at all? And it felt the same way with Crosshair of like. Mm. He's going to incinerate everyone. Yeah. And, you know, they don't mean to directly do that to him, but you still have that sort of uh, pathos and, and that feeling for Crosshair of like, Crosshair's mad that going to be mad that his brothers did that to him. And like, but, oh, yeah. but did they or did you choose that? It's real uh, Vader, Obi Wan stuff. Right there with you on that. And then the added layer that you touched on of, of just, you know, how much is. Is Crosshair doing this? How much was already there? We've talked about he was always a, he was always uh, already a little bit of a curmudgeon, right? He was always not the friendliest of the bunch. <laughs> so what's in there? What's that chip picking up on? Is one of the little details I might want to explore later on with this. But yeah, it, it's it's sad. So there, it's an extra layer of tragedy because now it's uh, could also be what the Empire does to those that follow them. Yeah, yeah, and I'm very curious to see if it comes back around to the the rest of the bad batch at some point wanting to rescue crosshair wanting to get that inhibitor chip out and see <laughs> was any of that you or was it all the inhibitor chip like we expect yeah yeah, yeah. and maybe they'll like the answer maybe they won't i don't know i don't know and i like not knowing yeah and sometimes be careful what you ask for in star wars you might not like the answer Exactly. Any other uh, thoughts on the big old themes before we take a break? No, the only thing I'll say is for if this being this all time instant classic episode, it was it was so wonderfully narrow focused to me in terms of some of the themes like you would almost think this would be an hour discussion of the first half of our show. I, I, I think it was just an, an economy of scenes of real specific purpose and, and, and direct form of uh, just writing. And, and that's one of the other, other reasons I, I loved it. it didn't cover a lot of ground. It covered the ground they really needed to cover for the show. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll very much agree with that. And, uh, Ada, well said, um, I think maybe the reason this episode was extra powerful is there are definitely signposts in the dialogue of, of different ways that a, a viewer could approach this. But so much of what was powerful about the themes were that they were conveyed just emotionally in mm -hmm. the spaces, uh, the choices. It was, it was something that it, they made you feel these ideas as much as they sort of intellectualized them. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we are going to both feel and intellectualize some of our favorite moments, the action, the comedy, the canon, uh, that Cad Bane guy we know from other places. We're going to talk about all that in just a moment. Hey, Four Center friends, make sure you're keeping up to date on all the great content from Jennifer Landa. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, you whippersnappers, Four Center's own Jennifer Landa continues to bring you fun, informative, and insightful laughs and moments. Also, Jennifer brings her experience and perspective as a Star Wars loving mother to her DIY projects, blogs, and more. So be sure to head on over to JennyLanda.com. That's J E N I L A N D A.com for articles like how to make your own Darth Maul sneakers or 10 unique Star Wars baby gift ideas. Follow Jen on Twitter and Instagram at Jennifer Landa and on TikTok as Jennifer Landa1138. <laughs> We 
are back to discuss some of our favorite moments from episode eight of the Bad Batch reunion. We're going to dive into the action moments. Ken, I thought this was a good action episode. How about you? Sir, I enjoyed the action found in this uh, animated <laughs> Star Wars program. In this fine streaming program. What were some of your favorite action moments? Uh, I kind of went all over the place here. I, I went out of order in my notes. I, I wrote, uh, to, to quote a great Gungan warrior, firing up the cannons. Uh, <laughs> I know it's not the exact quote, everybody. Um, no shields here. I, I really love that particular moment of, of just like the reaction, the, 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 what the cannons actually did, destroying things, but just that first one. And, you know, look, hey, these, these poor clones, I don't know, again, how much of choice they're having in this matter. I, I don't know. There's bigger moral questions. Uh, no morals in this moment for me. Boom, clones go flying, and Kenny clapped on his couch in the morning. Yeah, no, that that was one of the best action moments. And I think maybe why the action and even the emotions of this episode felt elevated to me because it was really uh, fulfilling the the promise of the premise of the Bad Batch of like, uh, we do things in unconventional ways. And some of our unconventional tricks, uh, crap, they're not working because Crosshair knows like, okay, we'll, we'll make some other ideas up in the moment based on the environment, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the firing there, the, having that that fear of like, but that's going to collapse the whole room. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And just yeah. the utter, the scale of it and the horror of it and the chaos of it uh, and, and the cleverness of it. That's uh, so great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also enjoyed uh, record tossing the proton bomb, but uh, then I wrote pretty much record throwing anything is a win and yelling direct hit. It's just, it's fun. Yeah, no, that 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 is an absolute uh, great one. It, it's a perfect a bit of uh, I really wrestled with action or comedy for that one because yeah. you know we, we set up how much he loves proton torpedoes. It's a weird, great comedy moment. He's so back to himself, like feels great, headaches gone. I'm I'm wrecker, 110 percent wrecker uh, through this whole episode. But then just the absolute blunt, crude. <laughs> don't load it anything don't uh find some clever way to manipulate the technology like tech just <laughs> heave a proton torpedo and then yell direct hit yeah so good um yeah and for me uh th that was a great toss but i i slightly prefer record just straight up tossing clones out of that window or the you know the hole in the the cruiser uh the one that he just picks up and heaves then slams the other on the ground and yep. gives him a heave and the yeah. second one who falls, there's there's this great scream. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that the wonderful team of sound editors, designers uh, who work on Star Wars have said, yeah, people recognize the Wilhelm scream too much and yeah. uh, it takes people out of the moment. So we're phasing it out. But, but we got another scream that people will find eventually that we're adding. And just the way that was shot and that scream being pretty distinctive, there's a part of me is like, is that? Is that, could that be the new Wilhelm? Is this a clue? Did yeah. they put it in a uh, really prominent space so we could find it other places? I I love that. I love that idea. Yeah, I've been waiting to kind of identify it. So that, that could be the one. What do what do we think it was taken from? Some uh, you know, Filoni walking into the break room and not finding any uh, you know, any <laughs> Heinz ketchup because he's from Pittsburgh. Is that? What it is? Yeah, no, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's someone in you know the design department tripping. I think it's a uh, maybe it's Matthew Wood stubbing his toe. I don't know. <laughs> Great call. Yeah, so who knows? But man, yeah, the tossing, the just chucking. And uh, we should, as we we're talking about all the action, uh, note that, yeah, most of these uh, these baddies are clones, uh, yeah. but those uh, three uh, prototype stormtroopers yeah. are there too, the ES-234. Right. I love that, actually. I, was, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what else you got for action moments? Uh, I do Omega shooting action when she pull, pulls the, uh, the the bow out. Like I, I, you know, she's in it, and this has been a progressive uh, thing, right? She's just learning. She's getting the weapons. She's learning how to defuse bombs or set up all these things. And I'm still waiting for that Omega armor. I'd love, I'd love to, you know, maybe a hat, like a ball cap, something to <laughs> something, some <laughs> layer of protection because she's in a war. Uh, but I did enjoy her just playing. Oh yeah, that's right. I got a weapon, and I'm in this. Yeah, yeah, no, that was really, really great to see her actually uh, it, be a part of the team, too. They've done such a great job of that. I've said that uh, kind of week after week that they start the first couple episodes getting rid of those. Hey, should a kid be in uh, this danger zone with the kid being like, no, this is where I want to be. Respect my choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and just continuing that connection of like, she's going to learn. She's going to grow. She's going to be a part of this. And her just whipping out the crossbow and taking down some uh, some fellow clones. 
it makes her a part of this. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, I even before we get into the great tra- trapped in the cruiser uh, bits, I really like the little chase with the Bracca scrappers, and in particular, uh, the Bracca scrapper who's escaping, uh, getting shot and slumping over that panel, mm. and then. <laughs> <laughs> just rolling off the cliff uh, is just like it was just some like great visceral thrilling action you know uh and I, I did like that the next scene that like they're grabbing that guy and and uh, you know person putting him on the uh, on the pile there because i was like did they, wow they just killed him in a fantastic fashion <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and they're they're using stun bolts and like, well, I stunned him. Oh, he went over the cliff. Well, what do you do? You try. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. I was like, hey, 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 for effort. You know, what are you going to do? Yeah, but it did. Uh, uh, I assume that he's still alive or they would not have taken the time to tie up his corpse. Yeah. 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 Uh, in, in that, uh, you know, it's some great comedy moments in that. But in that action scene, that record, you know, it hits his head when he falls off. And it's so joyous that ah yeah. the big guy can hit his head again just uh, yeah. it's a really weird thing to be happy about of like yeah. yeah we can just hit this guy's head as much as we want now no problem <laughs> keep it going keep it going yeah. uh any other moments of action for you that you wanted to focus on uh, it, you know it's the big ones it's the big ones uh so i'll just uh, you know the, the ion in- engine chamber escape was big time all caps big time cinematic tension I bought into the tension. One of those moments where you just, you, you know, everyone, you pretty much think everyone's going to be generally okay. in episode eight of a, of a, of a show, this isn't game of Thrones where I'm expecting, you know, uh, tech to be ripped in two or something. And, uh, and some episode that breaks your heart. Uh, but who knows anymore? And that's why that whole sequence, uh, the, the timing, the editing, the, 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 everyone's just raving about this, this episode's animation, particularly where, you know, it almost looked live action at times. It was so good. And I just bought into all of the tension. It was really good beat by beat. Yeah. The ion engine separating was just, yes, everything about it was great. Uh, the cleverness of the plan, the teamwork as you highlighted, yeah, yeah. uh, the horror of what is going to befall them if the ion engine fires. Uh, and then, the uh, that I was really surprised by is the horror of Crosshair's injuries. And then on top of all that stuff, that's uh, kind of a narrative is just how great it looked. The mm-hmm. shot of the ex- explosions going off in the engine separating, not only did it look like aesthetically beautiful, it was just like mm-hmm. framed really well to kind of put it from Crosshair and his team's perspectives of like, Holy crap! What did they do? We didn't see this one coming. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of like the sky, the size of it, the scope of it, uh, and then the tumbling was really effective too. You could really feel mm-hmm. how disorienting that was for uh, Bad Batch, and that they had to keep making these choices of like, well, we can't do a a cool move where we uh, take all the bad guys out and are left standing. Everything we can come up with is also kind of horrible to ourselves. <laughs> Yeah. So just so much in that ion engine separating the love. It was great. It was, I, I felt like Omega. I was like, oh, I've never really been in here. I, mean, I remember Force Unleashed, you get in some chambers. I remember you got to get out of uh, Death Star and whatnot. But it was great. So fun secret. Yeah. There, there's a, there was some video game energy, like when mm-hmm. they were crawling on the uh, the panel and, and sliding. And, yeah. uh, and Wrecker was uh, questioning what the word egress means. Like, I, I felt like I, I've crawled around in places like this in a video game. I can relate. Uh, I just more and more like I, I, I swear to God, I used to have a great vocabulary. Then I moved to L.A. and got a job in security and I, I'm wrecker now. Wait, egress is the outway, right? That's the, <laughs> OK. Got it. Got it. Well, it's a security guard. You must have encountered the word egress, right? Well, yeah, actually, jokes aside, yes, you did. But just, uh, you know, in, in 17 years, uh, even when you get to the director security spot, you're just let's just say you're surrounded by some personalities that don't value a lot of words. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, they would prefer exit to egress. Yes. Got it. Got it. Uh, well, let's go on to moments of comedy, whimsy, and weirdness then. Uh, yes, yes. Because uh, let me just say, the other one is the Cad oh, Bane please, stand- yes. Well, the Cad Bane standoff, uh, I'll highlight particularly his fingers tapping the belt moment, but I do believe, yes, we need, we need Cad Bane chapter, uh, chapter of discussion here on the, on the episode. So, yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the the canon lore, we we will dive deep into to Cad Bane. And yeah, no, if you wanted to take a moment to celebrate the actual action of that scene, by it's, all means, go for it. Everything about it, but I mean, I, I wanted to highlight specifically him tapping his fingers on his uh, the gun belt. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the Western motifs in this. 
I can't even, you can't even call them motifs. Just, it was a Western. No. Uh, it, it just, the music was a, a beautiful and great, but uh, yeah. not subtle. Yes. Uh, and I, I definitely want to talk about that here in a bit, but yeah, I just love that specific moment. And then um, the, the horror, you mentioned the horror, the, the, when he does uh, get the shot on Omega, there is a beat and just the, the, she takes a breath. Michelle Ang takes a breath as Omega. It broke my heart. It just broke my heart. There's no one there to help her. No one there to save her. And she has a second to realize it's about to happen. Ah, it just broke my heart. It was a real powerful, effective moment. It It is really powerful, right? Because we've seen her uh, develop this bond with mm -hmm. the clones and we've seen her learn the rules of the squad, right? And yeah. you can almost see in that microsecond of like, I, I can't call anybody, Hunter's down, uh, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. This is just going to happen. Yeah. Let me ask you this while we're talking about the Cad Bane action moment in particular. Mm-hmm. When you were sitting there watching it the first time, you know, when you're watching something like this the first time and it slows down, did you think that Hunter had a chance or were you all like uh, Team Cad Bane that that Hunter is not going to be able to to top uh, Cad Bane in a yeah. in a, a, a blaster draw duel? I, I think I was so pulled on the moment that I, I almost was banking on some kind of distraction. Uh, like Boba Fett comes down and Cad Bane shoots him in the helmet and suddenly that deleted scene was back. No, um, jokes aside, I, I, I kind of was so in the moment. I didn't think Hunter, the chances were great. I, I again, can assume he's not going to die in that moment. You know what I mean? Unless it's episode nine of Game of Thrones. So I, I, I was pulled in by it. It had, a, it made me flash back to Red Dead Redemption one, the first game where you had a lot of duel. In there. Yes. Hunter, press your red eye button, press your red eye button. <laughs> Yeah, I think that there it was maybe just the the mood of this episode that did I think uh, effectively communicate. Hey, here's this bit of sunlight for the Bad Batch at the beginning of the episode, and then it goes away, and everything is ominous and doom. Yeah. Uh, that felt like this is not going to go well. But also, just like for me, it was the uh, the joy of living with some of these characters for a long time and knowing like Hunter if you can think of something really clever and outside of the box to do, you might be able to get out of this. But if you're just going to try to outdraw Cad Bane, you're going down, my friend. <laughs> no, <they're> <laughs> and I don't want you to. And that's the way I felt is like I was begging in my mind in those microseconds yeah. for Hunter to do something totally out of the box that would surprise uh, or outside of the box that would surprise Cad Bane. And when he didn't, I was like, that's what happens, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, you, he's you actually, Cad Bane. Yeah, you touched you touched on kind of maybe what I was feeling of just like I maybe thought something outside the box was going to happen. Uh, instead, it didn't, and I'm so glad it, it didn't. Not that I'm rooting against Hunter, but it just uh, that made it a, a power a powerful moment. I, I keep using that term, but it's just like yeah, you you need that oomph, that power, that gut punch, and and that that worked. Yeah, and I think you know it really plays off of uh, we we did uh, good Clone Wars episodes about. Uh, Cad Bane's first broadcast appearance and his first yeah. appearance in actual uh, chronological narrative order in those yeah. Clone Wars episodes. Uh, but in doing those deep dives, you and I were both really reminded that uh, they discussed, uh, the creators of Clone War, that Cad Bane was uh, meant to be a reminder that bounty hunters are scary and that he's yeah. got to be legitimately scary and you have to believe that he can take people out. And it was great to see him come back and carry that weight with him, that that was successful and you believe that as much of a badass as hunter is that he's not going to beat cad bane at this because cad bane is a true badass yeah yeah i agree yeah powerful stuff uh let's move on to moments of comedy whimsy and weirdness then what do you got uh, there yeah i enjoyed the uh, record the whole teaching omega sequence now personally i always say i connect to record in a lot of weird ways i'm, I'm not a prankster i just i just just despise pranks it's just it's just playing on people's trust of you and using it against it's just one of my least favorite forms of entertainment or comedy but here in context of the show him kind of playing that brag it got i like uh as a former baseball coach i like coaching with a little bit of pressure of doing it like just get in the box and figure it out we can talk about it all day but get in the box and figure it out so i like that whole sequence which ends ends with wrecker uh saying i'm not crazy and then unleashing a homer simpson crazy <laughs> laugh from like a treehouse of horror just like <laughs> i i really love the, the that and then again it serves as this light uh fluffy cloud before the darkness hits like you touched upon yeah no this is a great moment and uh, i really like the comedy of him going like gotta choose now 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 no, no, no. <laughs> not that one uh is really really great uh comedy to show character and also to just show a true connection and it's meaningful after the horror they went through specifically Wrecker and Omega yeah. last week 
that he is really trying to prepare her for. This is what it's like under tension to do it. Not, I'm not going to teach you with me holding your hand. I'm going to teach you with uh, fear. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, very insightful for old Wrecker. Um, for me, one of my first uh, comedy moments is I, I did, it's nice and straightforward, uh, but I, I laughed at records. I've got this under control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I think I would have. Uh, I think I would have said that, that's fine. That's a good, good comedy line. Uh, but the fact that it was a uh, screamed quietly as he sped away, uh, clearly not under control. Yeah, yeah. That made it nice, nice. Uh, what's some other moments for you? Uh, I guess we're staying in record town here. I, I love the record trying to force open that door and Omega just pressing the button. <laughs> Got it. Comedy <laughs> character again. Why is Ken keep saying he's like Wrecker? Go into my house. Me trying to open some kind of device, and 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 then Grace just comes up and goes, no, "You just, you just, you just do that." Oh, okay. I just, it's, I do that. I do it weekly. So I've seen myself in Wrecker. Finally, finally, there's a Star Wars character I can connect. Now, kid, uh, no Wrecker's great. Uh, and then uh, he has this little line. He just kind of mutters about failing his first disarming test. I'm like, yeah, scars. Like, what's? Why is he losing eyes? Did, 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 did he get taught the same way and it blew up? <laughs> I didn't have time to look it up. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, honestly, if there is anything in canon, but it, it, that line felt that way to me of like, is that, did he learn the hard yeah. way right away? <laughs> it's kind of funny it's just, if he's like, well, I'm, I'm ready to begin my journey. Oh, <laughs> very, very funny. Oh, yeah. I, I had the door thing written down too. Cause honestly, I kind of have the opposite of like, if there's a bottle or something I'm trying to open, I always think that there's some level of finesse that I should be able to do like Omega. And I end up like searching for like hidden buttons or tabs or instructions I met. And then my wife's just like, uh, here, give it to me. And she just, you know, uses uh, actual strength and brute force. And like you're meant to, it's the total opposite of this awesome. scene. Hey, like there's no know, secret pull harder. Yeah. We, we have, we have found the right partners for us, sir. <laughs> yes. We can open everything between the two of us. Uh, but yeah, that was a great moment. And also I think it, it, it is a funny moment for Wrecker, but it also really continues this thing with Omega just being more observant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was oh, yeah. really, really nice. You know, like that joke would have worked and it would have been fine with, uh, Echo or Tech being the one who pushes the button, but there's this, you know, thread with Omega where we're still kind of wondering, you know, exactly what is her purpose? You know, mm -hmm. does she have a special a skill like the rest of the bad batch and the fact that she is very observant keeps popping up in little fun ways. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, love that. Um, w what else you got? Um, I uh, have the, uh, Oh, you, you mentioned it, but the, the, everyone sliding down in the engine chamber was, <laughs> had real fun vibes to it in the middle of the dark episode. And you said it, you said it very up top, just as this dark episode, serious stuff, storm clouds are coming, Annie. And, and then you had little moments like this all the way through. And that is the template for star Wars. You can't forget that. And you can never forget that. If you're putting together, I don't care if you're doing a fan film or not star Wars that works when it's, best when it's that and i i had a big smile i like i kind of like sliding down things i don't do it often i haven't done it in a while i'll go to a playground and slide down uh you know sir get off the playground i got one more slide down uh, i i really love that moment yeah no sliding is great the uh the annual bar crawl that uh my friends and i do in minneapolis uh i haven't been on in a couple of years but uh it was a tradition that we found a route between one of the bars that includes a little slide and yeah, <laughs> a bunch of adults slide down and it has a real vibe like Wrecker. Uh, yeah. I loved him sliding down backwards. Uh, it was great. Yeah. Um, and in that same moment, we had some great uh, uh, bickering mm -hmm. uh, where Echo says, I didn't think you meant we'd be escaping through the engine. <laughs> and Tech says, I could not have been clear. <laughs> <laughs> Just funny by itself, uh, uh, but I know as many fans have pointed out and many fans have enjoyed, there is this really great back and forth between yeah. uh, Echo and Tech in particular because it seems like their skill sets do overlap a little bit and they mm -hmm. kind of got to work together and they go back and forth about who should provide who <laughs> with the maximum amount of information and who should have said what when. Yeah, yeah, no, it's one of the fun relationships. And I, I still I think we're all... Waiting. I know you uh, specifically have mentioned a few times they're just waiting for a real, real heavy Echo episode. And we, any, anytime they're using them, even the stuff with with Hunter, the connection with Rex, and, and this kind of uh, Cold War brewing between Tech and Echo, I, I, it, it's effective when they when they use it. Yeah. Well, and his his scomp link arm is clearly an MVP of uh, yes. of all of their missions. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, 
a couple other uh, tech moments for me. I just wanted to highlight that actual line that he says mm-hmm. to uh, to Omega when she asks what was the war like, and he says it was a primary mission objective comprised of battles of various fronts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. so great and it's so of the character. It's it's very very funny. Uh, but I love that little bit of uh, follow up of like, no, that's that that's what it was. I, I'm not joking with you. That's what I mean. That's how I see things. Yeah, no, it, we we've talked about tech a lot. This is this is so, in the uh, the the poignancy that you you get from this moment that we discussed earlier. It's just it, it it continues to impress me what they're doing with tech. I don't necessarily know if if tech. Uh, he has echoes of, you know, kind of neurodivergent. Right. And, and, and I think they, there's never a punchline at his expense. There's never, everything is so him and so effective and the humor just comes from the moment and his point of view. It's the development of tech in this show versus even just the Clone Wars season seven, seven stuff is just really impresses me. Uh, and, and I know tech's one of your favorites. I, I just love everything about uh, what they're doing with the character. Yeah, and I think this line was a, a highlight of something we've talked before of when you're constructing a joke, you know, there's always contrast. That's my main opinion of what comedy is, is all comedy comes from some kind of contrast. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes the setup line is literal and we can hear it, and sometimes it's just sort of implied by cultural norms. Mm-hmm. And when you're you're constructing a joke with a contrast, the contrast can sometimes be uh, A is right and then B is funny because it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's not what the construct is with tech. It's uh, A is uh, one thing and then B is funny because it's just wildly different. It's mm-hmm. not bad or wrong. It's just different. Different. Yeah. And that's and you get this delightful contrast of like, oh, wow, that makes perfect sense. And there's nothing wrong with it that that's the way you see things tech. But it's funny because it's not what uh, mm-hmm. Omega is expecting to hear. Yeah. No, absolutely right. Four Center Joke Theory episodes will be, we're just going to do a whole series on it. <laughs> just, uh, it. It's fun to break down. It's fun. The, the art of comedy, the art of commu- communicating uh, uh, everything through through jokes. It's, it's real powerful, real powerful form of entertainment, clearly. Uh, just check uh, Netflix's uh, comedy specials. But yeah, they're, they're <laughs> on point with yes. uh, tech. Yeah, yeah. And, and one other bit of tech comedy for me, maybe you have this one on your list too, uh, it's, well, it's, it, tech tech kind of does the setup, and Wrecker does the knockdown, uh, literally as well, of tech just becoming intrigued uh, in wanting to celebrate uh, the engine and starting in on a, on a Wikipedia entry of this blast primer coating is capable of withstanding record. No one cares. Okay. Knocks him over. <laughs> <laughs> so so great and uh, much to be discussed there about what is the value of knowledge yeah <laughs> how much should it be appreciated and when who do yeah. you agree with in this instance yeah i was gonna say yes yeah, so when uh is a big question about what is knowledge <laughs> exactly exactly uh any other moments for you final one was actually uh linda from cad bain i just really do love the line ain't you smart kids got it all figured out i just i thought that was great yeah, and it also does speak to, uh, I think, this ongoing story of uh, her being observant. That's not what Cad Bane means, but uh, yeah. there's a little part of me as an audience member who wants to be like, shut up, Cad Bane. Totally. <laughs> she does have things figured out. No, totally, totally. He's a bad not, guy. <laughs> not this, but later. Uh, in terms of this contrast you were talking about that makes Star Wars uh, feel like Star Wars, where there's almost always room for whimsy, even when <laughs> things are dark and horrible. Uh, Wow, utter tension between the standoff between uh, Cad Bane and Hunter and the, oh no, uh, can Hunter uh, handle this? And, oh no, Hunter's been shot. Is he going to be okay? And injected right in there is uh, <laughs> Cad Bane's droid, uh, Toto 360. Oh, oh my booster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, in, the, in the midst of the horror of Hunter just got shot. The immediate thing you hear is uh, a wacky droid line. This might have been the episode where I I, I developed a, a more positive uh, a love for Toto. I didn't have a negative. I just had kind of almost a neutral opinion, right? For me personally, and this this great beats. I know Seth great voices him and everything, but it it uh, great beats in this episode with Toto. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's dive into then moments. Uh, or I'm sorry, did you have any any more uh, moments of whimsy? No, no, I didn't. No more laughing. No more. no more laughing. Let's get okay. serious, Ken. Yes. We're going to go into canon lore connections. Uh, so a big one is, you know, Cad Bane and Toto 360. Uh, I kind of shared a little bit of, of my thoughts about the the great connection to the way he's set up in the Clone Wars is a bounty hunter to truly be feared, a bounty hunter who can take it to Jedi 
and really, really uh, paid off in this episode for uh, longtime fans of feeling the weight of like, oh, he's not he, he's not Dengar or Bosk or mm-hmm. somebody we don't know he is. He is uh, frightening. How did you feel about him coming back? Were you excited? What were your emotional reactions? Yeah, I, I, I've over the years have really grown to love Cad Bane. And it's interesting to, for myself to remember back when I first saw him. And, and as I've said before and, and even written before, I still think on paper Cad Bane shouldn't have worked as, as well as he did. But they, they knew what they were doing. And what I mean by that is the design. When you I'm going back to Clone Wars. When you actually first see him in the broadcast order it's one of the best episodes we'll die what do we call it? die hard in space is what we kind of talked about in clone wars report yeah when you see him and this is me like an older generation sometimes gets grumpy about how characters look in star wars that that mythical is it star wars e or star wars enough the hat the gun the 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 duster oh he's a cowboy and i'm someone who loves playing just silly you know surface level versions of the west on video games and everything i'm there for that i love young guns and tombstone I, i'm there for that kind of stuff but i just don't know i didn't know if i wanted it in star wars and the cabane works coming back to this episode i had this thought joseph was like if if you're not super familiar and you're just a disney plus subscriber you like that mando baby yoda show and now you're taking this in and you're enjoying it so far and then clint eastwood shows up <laughs> Does it work for you? And I, I think the answer is going to be probably yes, because it, it worked in the Clone Wars. They know what they're doing with this character. It's a little bit of a redesign, which I actually really liked. But the music, more than any other time in Cad Bane's career, is over the top. The 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 fingers the, uh, the fingers tapping on the gun holster, like I mentioned, uh, is, is over the top in a way. The toothpick, everything is played up because they're reintroducing them. I think they know there's they there's some people being introduced them for the first time. At the end of the day, it all really worked for me because I was super familiar with this guy and I cheered in my heart. It was early in the house. Uh, I cheered and I was excited. But it, it, I, that's I'm really looking at the moment. I, I'm cur- I'd love to hear from non, you know, Star Wars in-depth fans who aren't counting down until Cad Bane returns who are now like, why is Clint Eastwood here? I'd love to get their takes on it. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was so thrilled to to hear the voice. Like, I loved the tease in the middle of the episode of like with the uh, discussion between the Cami Owens of, yeah. well, we've already got people looking for it. like, well, we can send out more. And then you know, the rest of the episode was uh, exciting enough that I didn't have that moment to do the drop down of like which bon- bounty hunters might show up. So I had that great thrill when, oh yeah, of course, here we go. And then I was so invested uh, in just what was happening. I didn't uh, track the toothpick until the second episode now or the second right. viewing. And I was like, okay, see Crosshair's got the toothpick. I'm waiting to see if Cad Bane's <laughs> going full toothpick. Yeah. And I wonder if, if people who didn't know he was the original toothpick guy are like, everybody who hates him likes toothpicks <laughs> <laughs> might be distracted, yeah. but I don't know. Uh, yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Be careful of going full toothpick kids. Be yeah. Careful. Yeah. And I agree with you about the music. I think mm-hmm. um, it, it is phenomenal throughout and, mm-hmm. and like so many episodes, just showing that great range uh, of moods and tones and styles. But I'm, I'm kind of with you that maybe that it was pushed to a super clearly Western mm-hmm. um, to really reintroduce Cad Bane. And it, it's that one bit of like a um, little trill that is from mm-hmm. actual westerns but then it has also been used in everything from like what uh, you know uh, commercials yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> you know uh, uh, uh about what is it i you oh. know what I, you know the commercial i'm talking yeah, about well yeah i know exactly it was the one you're talking about i can't remember but yeah anything could be but detergent it yeah it, it pops up you know? yeah it, it's a sound that's so connected to westerns that it is used to now to parody westerns and to parody standoffs. Yes, that's it. Yeah, you know, is mom versus the laundry, dad versus Domino's pizza. Yeah, it pops up anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I you mentioned this already the uh, the Clone Wars arc that was going to be about getting young Boba Fett, uh, voiced by Daniel Logan, in the armor mm-hmm. and kind of having him learn the true ropes, what it truly means to be an actual bounty hunter from Cad Bane. Uh, so I, I went and did a little bit of research on that because I wanted to talk about what could be next, and I wanted to make sure that we were doing it uh, from a place of some amount of knowledge. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to read this uh, Wikipedia summary Please. of what it was. <laughs> Everyone cares. Go for it. <laughs> uh, it says, Before the cancellation of the Clone Wars TV series, Cad Bane was set to make an appearance during a four-episode arc starring him and Boba Fett. 
The two are going to team up for a rescue mission on Tatooine. Uh, rescue mission is in uh, quotations marks because uh, I think uh, that was a question of between them of whether it was a rescue mission. Uh, but they were going to team up for a rescue mission on Tatooine where Tusken Raiders had kidnapped a child. It would emphasize Boba's and Cad's relation to one another as Cad had known Django. Cad Bane would also get new clothes in a new ship called the Justifier. Mm. In a clip revealed during the animated Origins and Unexpected Fates panel at Celebration Orlando in 2017, Cad Bane and other bounty hunters had ended an insurrection by Fett. To finish it, they engaged in a standoff duel where the younger mercenary got his helmet dented. Mm. So, if you want to check that out, uh, that video is very easy to find. Just uh, Google animated origins and unexpected fates and then it's right at the end of the panel somewhere around a minute 46 that they play the clip that's being described there it's pretty great it's you know obviously kind of the early animatic but it's got cad and boba standing off you got uh, boss you got embo it's just glorious Mm -hmm. uh and then what happens in this shot is it's very very similar to the way that hunter and cad bane's uh standoff their duel is shot and framed and even i think some some similar uh temp music um but cad bane and boba both shoot cad bane goes down boba fett goes down you see the uh smoking dent in his Mm. helmet of how he got the dent so cad bane goes down in the clip and then in this interview this panel uh the host tries to ask dave filoni repeatedly uh, so what happened to cad bane did he it looks like he got shot what happened to him and Dave Filoni is his normal cheeky, mm. uh, fun self like he is at uh, conventions with things like this. And said like, oh, yeah, it's too bad that we're out of time for the panel. I guess I guess we'll just never know. <laughs> so part of the reason, Ken, that I want to go down uh, that long rabbit hole of uh, Cad Bane research is as of right now, we know we know that there had been ideas of what Cad Bane's fate can be right. uh, not confirmed by Dave Filoni, but know that he has some thoughts. Yeah. What I'm wondering is, is that going to be incorporated into the Bad Batch and will it work? Obviously not the four episode arc with a whole different story on Tatooine. But it did occur to me that since the Kaminoans uh, have sent multiple bounty hunters that we could be getting a story of, uh, you know, Cad Bane's got her and other bounty hunters are vying for her. We've already seen Fennec Shand. Fennec Shand seemed to make a vow of like, this is not over for me. Right. Fennec Shand seemed personally invested. Uh, but then just canon wise, you know, we got mm-hmm. Book of Boba Fett coming up. We got that unfinished thread of young Boba yeah. putting on the armor. And, you know, Cad Bane is uh, is not anywhere in canon yet. So mm-hmm. after this moment, this is now his latest appearance in canon, the canon timeline. So there is a real opportunity for Cad Bane to die and for mm-hmm. Boba Fett to truly take the mantle of. This is one of the reasons that people think. Boba Fett is the baddest bounty hunter ever in this upcoming era is because he, he killed the previous baddest yeah. bounty hunter ever. I mean, you're, you're describing exactly how to go, book a good wrestling program, uh, a good wrestling <laughs> match of, of, of someone putting over the next star. Uh, no, I you're selling me on this idea that uh, I don't know if, this, if you're specifically suggesting or, or, or daydreaming about this ending up in the Bad Batch. Uh, I think there's possibility but, yeah. of it fitting, right? Because... Uh, if the Bad Batch is kind of involved in it as well. Yeah. And it's not just for me like, oh, yeah, hey, you know what? I love uh, Tara Sanube, so he should show up. Uh, He survived Order 66. I'd love that. But this makes sense from a couple perspectives because character-wise, because it's another clone who is different, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Boba Fett. So him interacting with Omega or the Bad Batch is interesting. Um, Yeah. Fennec Shand is uh, eventually going to have a relationship with Boba Fett and Book of Boba Fett is coming up. I know production timeline wise, this is way ahead of that, but yeah. you never know uh, how they might have uh, found some uh, synergy planned or unplanned. Uh, but from the audience perspective, uh, this is coming up. So there's there's some threads. I think because it would hinge on Omega and because the Bad Batch might be around to have a, a discussion about what it means to be different kinds of clones it makes it feel not like just a random other thread of Clone Wars stuck in here. No, it, you, you, the, the, the kidnapping angle, that, that, that's pretty crazy. And, and Filoni, uh, among many things that he, he, he's great at, just ask the internet, uh, the, him going, now I have an opportunity to redo something. And, and this is not one of these, uh, you know, stomping on a book or a comic and, and getting a lot of hate YouTube videos about it or anything like that. Like this is, that thing I had, it, it, it's not unlike... Uh, the uh, the the uh, train uh, the, the the 
the coal miner car chase in Temple of Doom, which was left over from the Raiders draft uh, from uh, uh, J.J. Abrams going, remember that we dived into the ruins of the Death Star? It's just got that vibe of, look, we can go back. How do we make that work for this show? And every, a lot of people are uh, want to, you know, uh, Omega and Boba Fett. The, there's a little bit of, uh, I've see, already seen some of those kind of speculations or, or theories, right? Uh, are they connected or just so you, you're actually pitching a really interesting idea to me, Joseph, uh, that uh, I, I would not have thought thought to be on board with. And now, oh, but, but you're on board with the uh, the uh, uh, incredibly wild Boba Fett speculation. Yeah, and and, and I do think uh, I made the passing reference to pro wrestling, but that that's how you tell those kind of stories. And I I think for Boba Fett, I, I that really works. Taking out this. Western, uh, I called it uh, uh, Cad Bane's Western Bonanza showdown theme, taking that, putting all that together, and Boba Fett gets a lesson but also comes out on top as, as the new baddie in the galaxy, and and uh, everyone bows down to him. I, that makes a lot of sense to me. So Yeah, and and I, I say this as somebody who, who loves Cad Bane. I think he's yep. great, but I think one of the great things about Star Wars is you can tell a million Cad Bane stories. It doesn't matter. He could Boba Fett could shoot him twice in the heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> However many hearts Juros have, uh, he could shoot him in every organ twice and tell this great Boba Fett story, and then they could announce a Cad Bane movie because that's the way timelines work in Star Wars. So it's not like I want to be done with the character or don't like the character. I just yeah. think it's okay for characters to have definitive endpoints in their timeline, especially when they serve the larger story. Well, well, and, and yeah, it, it, it'd be such a great way to use Cad Bane and to use his death to tell the overall story. It would really, really work uh, again to the point of let me pull back and just uh, not expect it too strongly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is definitely a, uh, Every speculation I have is a chance to practice letting go. And if it doesn't happen, I'll go, that's fine. I'll enjoy the story that they're telling me. The other thing about it, and, and then I'll let this go, is there's been so much great uh, uh, storytelling where Bad Bad, this is absolutely about the Bad Batch and Omega. It's it's really focused. But through their adventures, we're seeing all these snippets of what the galaxy is going through as it immediately transitions into the Empire. And I mm-hmm. think one of those things is, criminal syndicates and bounty hunters learning like, oh, it's a bonanza now yeah. uh, that the, the empire is going to look the other way and they're going to hire us to do all sorts of stuff. So having a little bit of a story that's a scramble yeah. for the bounty hunters to to prove their worth in this n- new regime, this new era is interesting and kind of makes sense, too. Uh, I love it. Yeah, no. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, I, I did because I didn't expect. The Bad Batch, we knew Fennec was coming, so I think there were some conversations, but I didn't expect the Bad Batch to go as deep as it has already gone into kind of the underworld or bounty hunters or smuggling or any of those kind of things. And so it, it, it seems like a natural fit at this point. Yeah, yeah. And also just like the the number of uh, of characters we know that we're seeing again, you know, from mm-hmm. Trace and Rafa to Cut to Rex, uh, right. all making sense so far and uh, and seeing if we can't continue that thread. It is the great uh, come back in here. You're in the show now kind of vibe every week, which uh, sometimes is criticized uh, so far. Uh, for me, it's working. I can understand why they can maybe get tiresome for some folks who want new things all the time, but this is very much of that era, so it's all tracking for me. Yeah. The other canon things for me are all uh, small little details, but I wanted to see if you had any canon lore connections you wanted to discuss. Same. I mean, the connection of the Clone War stuff, obviously very present. Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're only uh, months removed, but the, 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 the Omega moment we talked about really connected to just, again, my own personal memories. It was like my own highlight reel of favorite Clone Wars moments was playing. And, and Omega doesn't even know those ones. Uh, the little one for me, uh, and then I'll uh, kick it back to you, the Proton Torpedoes ones, you mentioned it. That connects to my childhood. That is one of the first terms of Star Wars that I learned. It's Yes, it's very prevalent. It's in the movie, New Hope. It's all over. But that is one of the ones that I carried to the playground that I remembered. Oh, proton torpedoes are those things on the X-Wing. And I, I just kind of enjoyed Wrecker being like, proton torpedoes, because I feel like that too. <laughs> yes, that just uh, that childlike glee at uh, big space missiles is yeah. is absolutely space torpedoes is absolutely felt uh, over here as well. Um, a thing that was uh, nice and clear, people picked up on it last week, but it was fun to see a little bit more close up. Is the uh, the scrappers on Bracca having very similar poncho to Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, continuing the great poncho love in the galaxy? A lot there. Uh, it was fun that establishing shot of Camino was so beautiful. Uh, the second time we went to Camino and seeing those uh, those V wings buzz like Tie Fighters was just yes. like a good visual little like yep the machinery of the uh, 
of the Republic is already feeling like the machinery of the Empire. Uh, great moment. Glad you pointed that out. Um, then the the artillery room features uh, prominently in in Revenge of the Sith, the uh, Battle of Coruscant. So that was great to see. Uh, it, it pops up in Clone Wars too, but uh, I remember that because in my trivia studying, uh, that's where the Wilhelm scream is yeah. in uh, Revenge of the Sith. Yep. <laughs> it's a, a tragedy in the artillery room. Uh, last one for me is just a, a fun detail that that popped for me on second viewing when I was, uh, uh, you know, still emotionally invested, but wasn't the first time is uh, that reveal that the clones are uh, all down uh, where where Cad Bane is uh, and they're they're calling for a clone and using the handle the CT 8508. Mm. Do you copy just driving home that Imperial clones don't use names anymore? Yeah. And I love that they're continuing that story that it isn't just like order 66 happened and now they just want to kill jedi like their personalities are changed their individuality is gone mm, yeah well uh, yeah yeah it, it's run all through the show and it was a it's a good moment and then and then and then and then just it worked also as a that was the moment i was like uh oh someone's here yep somebody a uh, bounty hunter's coming yeah yeah but i thought it was going to be dengar which is get why i shouldn't write these shows <laughs> which would have been a little bit embarrassing for crosshair because he looked a little bit like dengar when he was all bandaged up yes he did uh all right uh anything you disliked or questioned in this episode i no. i to highlight again i, I was uh, i put cad bane's music here i i'm not disliking it i'm not even questioning it it just it stood out in such a way i like i want a track of it already i'll play it while i work out it was it was wonderful uh but even when like he 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 stuns omega and, and like the the little theme plays i was like man did that undercut the moment i i don't think it did but i, I paused for a second so i just uh, the fact that they really leaning leaned into it i don't have a problem with it but it just stood out in such a way that i want to test the the temperature of the fandom and see if there was anyone that didn't like it and, and, and maybe uh, maybe has an issue with it yeah i mean i think it was a really big choice to say let's make this uh western you know duel connections to samurai duels and the way it's shot as well uh, that you know obviously the westerns are, are speaking uh, uh the samurai in movies and western movies are speaking to each other in in moments like this so it was really really strongly that uh even down to like going in hard on the close-up of the eyes which is you know different mm -hmm. when it's <laughs> a duros <laughs> yeah in a clone with a helmet on uh, but I, I think I did wonder about, I enjoyed this moment. I had no hesitation in this moment because I was so invested in the characters and the stakes for the characters. Yeah. Um, but Star Wars has worn its love of Westerns on its sleeve a lot in, or these kind of Western slash samurai moments a lot lately, right? There are many moments like this in the Mandalorian, uh, the great framing of the shot in Solo when Enfys Ness and the Cloud Riders uh, show up, right? Yeah. On, on Savarine. Like, th this kind of moment of uh, the hand floating over the holster mm. uh, to various degrees has really been highlighted a lot lately in Star Wars. So I'm, I'm curious to see if there are new approaches on it. Yeah. So it, it remains, you know, effective. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious to see, like I said, test the temperature. But again, I love it because I love Cab Bane, Cab Bane. But I I go back to the first, I mean, the first moment back in Clone Wars when he pops up at the end of season one in the broadcast order. I just remember going, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a floppy cat. <sighs> Outlaw Josie Wales. What's going on here? <laughs> Shortly after the end of the episode, I'm on board. So I think it, maybe the same thing happened. Yeah. It all works. It all works. Yeah. Uh, I think I was, this did not, uh, this was not a dislike. This was a question. Like this was like, I had to uh, <laughs> uh, pick it up and go, does this hurt? <laughs> uh, does this bother me? I got to see. I'm going to uh, prick my, my finger with it and go, does that bother me? Um, th th uh, there is a similarity to Mandalorian that, that mm -hmm. is pretty undeniable, right? Just yeah. emotionally that uh, this is a story of instead of, one uh, rugged warrior uh, adopting uh, a young child. This is a story of a, a group of very different rugged warriors adopting a child. And that's, yeah. we've talked about that. It's Star Wars. It's coming of age. It's, uh, we've enjoying the differences. But now that we're getting to this point of, well, when you're telling that story of a rugged warrior trying to raise and train and protect a young child, what's the worst thing that could happen? They could lose the child. But we have in Star Wars very recently gone through this beat. And there's also the similarity of, uh, Omega and Grogu were kind of both taken back to 
uh, a facility to be used for some level of dark science. Right. <laughs> Uh, that yeah. you know the the baddies want them back because they they they're valuable genetically. Yeah, yeah. It, so there are a lot of similarities, but I pricked my finger and I was just like, yeah, but the differences are so much that I don't care. I'm invested in these characters. In I acknowledge the similarity, but it's not taking me out of the show. Yeah, no, I, it, it's 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 very present, like you said, and and I think the Grogu one affected me in a different way, and it's just because I'm invested in the story differently, a, a, a unique experience for for both and. I'm with you too. That's a good way you take take a little uh, prick your finger and see how how much it bleeds. And uh, I'm with you. It didn't bleed much for me. Yeah, it, 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 I think the differences are large enough. The tone changes are large enough. Uh, you know, Omega and Grogu are you know very different characters with very different uh, perspectives. You know that all that stuff does add up to say, yeah, it, it, it's uh, similar if you just uh, outline it as beats. But once you add in all the characters and the humanity and the specificity of the situation, it is they remain their own, uh, to me, great stories. Very much so. All right. You have hopes for the next episode, Ken? Um, that we just, the party has really begun. And now we've got uh, tracking down Omega. We got Bounty Hunter showing up. Crosshair's pissed off and wants revenge. I think there's a lot of things going, and I'm, I'm, I really... Uh, I feel by by episode ten or eleven that you will just will be uh, maybe moving at a faster pace. Now that the show's moving slow, but just like the you know, welcome to the party, pals. We're picking up. Yeah, and the chase is exactly the right word. The chase is on. We're reaching that uh, uh, potential Blues Brothers level of like <laughs> other bounty yeah. hunters after Cad Bane and Omega. Uh, Crosshair wants to, to prove himself. Bad Batch is after. Maybe Bad Batch calls in some help. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a couple hopes for me. I really like how much they've been picking up directly I was, uh, off of episodes. I was really thrilled that, oh, we haven't left Bracca yet. It's our direct, mm-hmm. a direct continuation of them being spotted on Bracca. Um, so there's a part of me that's like, I would love to see it continue real directly. Uh, I would love to see a little bit of Omega trying to escape Cad Bane or interacting with Cad Bane and trying to figure him out. I would love to see just a little bit of them in the ship together. Oh, that'd be great. Um and then my other big question that I want to pitch to you, Ken, uh, since there are some uh, storytelling similarities that do happen, uh, mm. uh, do you think, like Mandalorian, the Bad Batch is going to go look for help in tracking uh, uh, Cad Bane down? Is it going to be they're going to go uh, get the team together? Or do you think the next episode, Bad Batch is just screaming after Cad Bane themselves? I, th- I think screaming after Cad Bane themselves, but learning that they're going to need some help. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that sounds like a very political answer. Yes. No, no but I think that that is a difference between their, if they're like, we can't track him, but we know somebody who can kind of thing is yeah. the next episode or else it's just like, get in the ship, go. Yeah, I'm saying yes, unless you need it to be no. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm. That, that, that's a very uh, familiar mm-hmm. sentence to me yeah. uh, coming from uh, the Midwest that can sometimes... <laughs> have very specific negotiations uh i've said that sentence about pizza toppings many times yes yeah. unless you need it to be no uh and then uh, final thing for me uh my hopes for the next episode or ongoing uh, continue to be how long till hondo yes the hondo countdown it's yeah. yep yep uh, it, it didn't make sense but for just a second when uh we were starting in on on cad bane like oh is that gonna be hondo <laughs> <laughs> nope Cad Bane, much better, much better. <laughs> Anything that we have not talked about that you wanted to touch on? No, what a full fun episode. Uh, like I said, instant classic is, is uh, I don't think that's hyperbole. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's going to stand the test of time. Absolutely, absolutely. Important to the story and uh, just has a lot of big joys uh, of its own between yeah. the action and the comedy and the depth. It's just fun to watch. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is a great episode in our opinion. So we are going to wrap up as we always do with this question of fun. Ken, if you could have a figure of any character or a toy inspired by this episode, uh, who or what do you want? Oh, you, you touched upon it earlier. I've already seen uh, out in the uh, fandom sphere this being discussed, but we need head wrap crosshair. <laughs> Six inch black series variant, whatever. Target, Walmart, Walgreen exclusive. I don't care. Galaxy's Edge exclusive head wrap crosshair. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I need a whole set of uh, Bad Batch in uh, three and three quarter uh, vintage. Uh, first, I just need them. Yeah. They're not uh, available yet. Uh, and then I need battle damage of all of them and you can take their helmets off and they have their bandage over their <laughs> <laughs> inhibitor chip removal and a uh, full Dengar version of crosshair would be great. Be great. Uh, here's a, here's an out of the, uh, outside of the box one for me. Uh, 
there's a great Cad Bane action figure from Clone Wars uh, mm. from that era, but I would like a new Cad Bane action figure. Uh, it's three and three quarter, but the accessories that Cad Bane comes with are, of course, the cool blasters and Toto 360. But then Cad Bane also comes with a life-size Cad Bane toothpick that you can chew on while playing with your Cad Bane action We figure. absolutely need that. Absolutely need that. Yep. <laughs> That. Absolutely. Uh, Cad Bane with toothpick would make me very, very happy. With that, Ken, uh, do you want to tell people where they can find us? I would love to. Uh, we can. Uh, we have the Force Center podcast feed. Uh, we can be found on Twitter at Force Center Pod or on Instagram and YouTube as well. You can also find us on Facebook at Force Center Podcast. You can get an audio book on us by going to audibletrial.com slash Force Center. And uh, you can get some merch if you want at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center. Also, uh, we, you, you podcasts available a lot of different spots, including Anchor, where we're ha- housed, and uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, and Spotify, uh, where there's uh, some new stuff coming, some features and stuff rolling out. We might start using some of it for Force Center. Stick around for that. And then also you can support us directly at patreon.com slash Force Center. Uh, we should point out that if you uh, join us in support at the top tier, you get a exclusive set of collector trading cards of me, Joseph, and Jennifer Landon, designed by the great Brian Ward. Uh, we got a couple uh, new uh, supporters at that level, Brennan and uh, Michael, and uh, you're getting cards very soon. So do that. You can also follow me at Catnapsock. Go to my web- website, catnapsock.com. Joseph. Yeah, you can find me on all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Joseph Scrimshaw. And you can check out all of my other comedy adventures on my website, josephscrimshaw.com. But for now, for myself, for Ken, for the quick draw of Cad Bane, this has been the Bad Batch Report. Bad Batch Report.